What is up everybody? For the video this week, we're going to be doing something a little bit different. Now, usually I look into the historical inaccuracies of different parts of Red Dead Online. Uh, we're going to stick with Red Dead Online, but I had a lot of requests from people to talk about some of the roles I'd like to see added to uh, Red Dead Online. So this video is going to be about three historically accurate roles that I absolutely would love to see added in Red Dead Online. Number one, inspired by the Klondike Gold Rush, which was happening in 1898, when Red Dead Online takes place, is the miner. After gold was discovered in the Yukon in 1896, the rush was on. 100,000 people left their jobs and homes and headed north for a chance to strike it rich. In the words of historian Pierre Berton, the Yukon was, quote, just far enough away to be romantic and just close enough to be accessible. To reach the gold fields around Dawson City, prospectors sailed out of San Francisco or Seattle, where large crowds would come to see the brave souls off. There were two routes to the gold, the poor man's route and the rich man's route. Those taking the poor man's route would sail to southeast Alaska. From there, the Klondikers would follow either the Chilkoot or the White Pass trails to the Yukon River and sail down to the Klondike. The rich man's route was vastly more expensive, but it was an all-water route where you'd sail to St. Michael's Island much farther north and take river boats up the Yukon River. Regardless of the route, as they crossed over from the United States to Canadian territory, Mounties required every single prospector to bring a year's supply of food in order to prevent starvation, saying nothing of other gear. This amounted to roughly one ton per man, which required transporting in stages, carrying one load a couple miles, returning for a second, third, fourth, and so on. Add to this the cold climate, mountainous terrain, malnutrition, and starvation. It's little wonder that only 30,000, less than one-third, made it to Dawson City. Of that number, only around 15% ever found gold, and even fewer became rich. Now, even though the Klondike Gold Rush started in August of 1896, it was actually still going strong by 1898, so it would be a really historically accurate addition to Red Dead Online. Personally, I'd love to see something similar added, either as an expansion or simply a role. In my fantasy world, one where Red Dead releases new content, players would book passage on a steamer out of Blackwater or St. Denis. For the poor man's route, players would sail up the Lanahechee River and offload somewhere north of Ansburg. From there, we purchase supplies and start off over the mountains, carrying our supplies in stages, an arduous enough task that most players won't bother to undertake it. Those willing to pay an extravagant fee could simply fast travel, that is, take the rich man's route. Either way, players would eventually reach the equivalent of Dawson and city where we purchase a claim and get to mining. Historically, a claim was 500 feet in the direction of the river and from bank to bank, provided that the river was less than 666 feet wide. At the outset of the gold rush, it cost $15 to register a claim and only $100 to rent it annually from the Canadian government. In time though, all those claims were outright purchased by miners, so prices dramatically increased. Newspaper accounts from 1898 show claims going for a few thousand dollars to as high as $50,000. I'd like to see Rockstar implement a similar historically accurate system where claims with a higher probability of gold or track record of producing it cost significantly more while others are completely random. So we, as miners, might boom or bust. But that's all part of the adventure. Rockstar should also allow players to buy and sell claims between players and or NPCs and even purchase shares of claims, something that happens happened all the time during the Klondike Gold Rush. In addition to buying claims, Rockstar should let us purchase businesses catering to miners in Dawson City, such as hotels, saloons, stables, general stores, you name it. Of course, we should already have this all over on the map, but I digress. Rockstar should also introduce sled dog teams for purchase in order to facilitate travel between Dawson City and the gold fields. Rockstar should also let us invest in upgrading our equipment from gold pans to sluice boxes to full-on mining enterprises. If players are anything like myself, we'd also like the opportunity to fight off claim jumpers who might randomly raid your claim from time to time. Of course, these are just ideas. We don't need all of them, but some sort of mining role would be awesome. And while a Dawson City would be great, simply adding parceled out gold fields somewhere in the northern part of the map would still be a blast. Number two, the trapper role. The trader role gives players a taste of the pelt and skin trade but historically it was trapping that accounted for the vast majority of this trade. And by the 1890s, it was still big business. Unlike bullets and arrows, traps preserved the quality of the fur and therefore helped ensure that the trapper procured the highest prices. While classic mountain men were anachronistic by 1898, many players in Red Dead Online, myself definitely included, 
Enjoy playing out a version of this, spending vast amounts of time hunting and living the life up in the Grizzlies, Big Valley, and Tall Trees. With just a few additions, Rockstar could help make this fantasy a reality by creating a trapper role in Red Dead Online. Rockstar should allow players to set up trap lines, a route along which a trapper sets traps for the animals he's targeting. Just as in history, trap lines should be vulnerable. Players should be able to steal carcasses from another player's traps if they come across them, but shooting a trap thief in Red Dead Online should carry no penalty at all. Even if there is no witnesses to the crime, anyone looting traps should automatically lose honor. Animals left too long in the traps should also deteriorate or be eaten by predators. Pelt values should be more in line with historical prices, particularly for those yielding the highest profits. In my research, I was able to track down a copy of the 1898 Fur Trade Review, volume number 26, which listed the standard price range for various skins, even denoting the value by season and regions. While Rockstar did overvalue the skins of certain species, such as mountain lion, elk, and rabbit, it vastly undervalued others. For instance, muskrats sold for between seven and $11 in 1898, Black bear skins sold for between $12 and $25. Silver fox pelts sold for anywhere from a low of $20 to as high as $100 a piece. If Rockstar better reflected such values in certain animal species, the trapper role would actually be profitable for players. Doing so would also make the acquisition of skins a more purposeful, more intentional enterprise focusing on quality over quantity. As part of this role, Rockstar should also release more buckskin and traditional mountain man clothing. Or even better, and long overdue, bring the trapper crafting mechanics from story mode into Red Dead Online, which would fit perfectly with this role. While repeating carbines and bolt actions make black powder rifles obsolete long before 1898, Rockstar should reintroduce these classic American arms, such as Hawkins and Kentucky Long Rifles. While outdated, the single shot rifles raise the stakes when hunting, placing the onus on the skills of the hunter rather than the ammo capacity of the weapon. To help encourage players to use them, Rockstar should also raise the XP on animals killed with such weapons or incorporate them into daily challenges. And last, Rockstar should allow us to buy, or even better, build a log cabin to act as a base of operations for the trapper role. If some of you are like me, I also want to customize everything about my cabin, from the interior layout to the fireplace, hanging animal heads on the walls, and putting furs on the bed. If our cabin is along a creek or a river, let us purchase a canoe, which we can use to not only check our trap lines, which would be really fun, but also collect and transport furs to market. If deeper into the interior, allow us to purchase a pack horse to do the same. And in case you're wondering, the historical price for that was $30. As I said with a minor roll, these are merely ideas, and Rockstar doesn't need to implement all of them in order to create a fun experience. But a trapper roll would certainly be historically accurate for the time period, and in my opinion, be well received by most players. Number three, the sheriff role. As many of you know from watching the bounty hunting video, shameless plug, I've been a big proponent of Rockstar adding a sheriff or lawman role for some time. As such, for those of you that watch the video, this idea might be a tad repetitive, but I suppose it's worth repeating in this video more than any other. Not only would adding this role be historically accurate, but it would also improve the overall experience of the game for many players. For instance, those taking up the sheriff role could go after griefers that are harassing other players in the lobby. Rockstar could facilitate this by expanding the distance from which sheriffs can detect them. As there's already an option to press charges against a griefer, Rockstar should expand on this and allow players to set custom bounties. If that griefer has harassed numerous people, and they also contribute money to the bounty pot, the reward should be substantial enough to motivate sheriffs to track them down. I personally put a lot of time into this game, and I can tell you that when my long distance delivery trader wagon gets destroyed by a griefer, in that moment, I gleefully put a $100 bounty on their head, knowing that somebody would wreak vengeance on my behalf and justice would be served. I'd even pay extra if the sheriff snapped the photo of the corpse and sent it my way, and I doubt I'm alone in that. Historically, there was an official Lawman newsletter that provided up-to-date information on outlaws called The Detective, which detailed rewards offered, crimes committed, physical descriptions, and when available, photos and sketches. Lawman paid $1 for an annual subscription, providing them with the latest data on outlaws in the American West. Rockstar could take inspiration from this, having players in the sheriff role pay an ongoing fee with in-game cash, something Rockstar would surely be on board with, for access to a newsletter like The Detective, giving details of NPC outlaws that are out there in the world. But rather than a bounty mission that simply puts a dot on the map, Rockstar could give players clues to start us on the search. 
Perhaps we stay on the lookout for a man with a scar above his left eye or a powder burn on his cheek. Maybe the newsletter mentions a handful of locations that the outlaw frequents or the info on somebody that may have seen him recently. Rockstar needs to make it feel like we're actually tracking him down. You get word that he bought a train ticket to here, then maybe you find a day old campfire over there. Have it take some real time to find your man. So it's an experience instead of a grind. Then pay out historical bounty prices, significantly higher than those currently dished out in Red Dead Online, so it's all worth the effort. Even more, Rockstar should allow players in the sheriff role to clean up a town like Van Horn, to break up saloon fights, jail drunks, disarm strangers, return stolen horses, and track down cattle rustlers. Players should start in small towns, but work their way up to larger communities, eventually hiring their friends as deputies, working together to create law and order. After enough experience, maybe even have the option of being designated as a Texas Ranger, U.S. Marshal, or Pinkerton. And perhaps it's these folks that can be the ones going after the griefers. Hardened law dogs with a track record of justice that would make griefers think twice about visiting their lobbies. Now I'm curious what you folks think of these ideas and what roles you'd like to see added in the game. So let me know down in the comments. As many of you are aware, this channel is not monetized. Therefore, if you do enjoy the videos and you want to support my work, please consider donating on Patreon. You can find that link down in the description. Thank you to all my subscribers. Thank you to my bronze and silver tier Patreon patrons. You guys are awesome. Also want to thank my gold tier supporters, Tyler Bioshock Rodriguez, Ashley Gertensen, Billy TK, a.k.a. Billy the Kid, The Innocents, and Chasing Victory. You folks rock. Thanks so much. See you next time.